Greetings, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to a very special Inflation Be Damned edition <laughs> of Monster Party. Monster Party. Monster Party. Monster. Oh, it's the holidays. That's the holiday sound. Holiday. Yes. yes, that's right. And now it's it's happening. It's finally upon us, for better or worse. You know what? We're going to embrace it, and we're going to do something right. with this episode that we've done in the past. And we're going to help guide you through the maze that is holiday shopping. But before we yeah. get to that, I am Matt Weinhold. I'm Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Strofe. And I'm James Gonis. And for this episode, yes. We are returning to what I would call a holiday tradition, right? It's a holiday yes. tradition. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. It's something we've done before, and we've done it with a longtime friend of ours. Sure. And it's now a tradition, and uh, we hope that through this episode that we can help you during this sometimes difficult holiday season. And so the topic for the show is... The Monster Party Holiday Gift Guide 2022. Dun, holiday dun, Gift dun. Guide! Yeah, it's a 2022. holiday gift guide. Yes, yes, we are providing a service to our listeners and horror and sci-fi fans everywhere. Yes. Yeah, because people people want to know what to send me, you know? <laughs> right, that's right. Yes, me too. And, and yeah. yeah. So, Or if you have that loved one out there who loves science fiction fantasy or horror it's like what what do i get that because there's a lot there's a lot out there well and that is a difficult thing too right there which is what do you get the person who's like us who has everything right collector yeah yeah the the persnickety collector who like larry you know he he gets that pez collection from his uncle and looks at it and goes oh thanks you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And and as far as being persnickety, you know, the thing is, oh, Larry has everything. And first of all, it's always great to have two of something. And well, that thing true, is, yes. I don't true. have one of everything. There are things out there that I, I don't have yet. Well, no, of that- course. Otherwise, what? Why? Why live? I mean, there's always something to be going after. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's going to be on your tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Matt, Matt, you mentioned this. I mean, when we've done the show, we, you know, we need a great guest with us. We need someone who understands toys and and new things at the holidays. Who's so, one of us. Yeah, he's got a finger on the pulse of all the cool stuff. Exactly. So He's got a know, pulse this- finger. <laughs> I mean, tonight's guest, he's hes no stranger to Monster Party. Uh, listeners may remember him as our unpaid intern, uh, our smooth, beautiful young man who accompanied <laughs> Monster Party to Japan. And we worked his ass off. But what an adventure that was, wasn't it? Uh, he's a huge Godzilla fan, a monster fan. He loves all things that we love. But he's also a very talented artist and designer. With the help of his lovely fiance. He created Sea Demon Vinyl that specialized in making unique monsters for unique individuals. That's but right. guys, his talent was noticed by other toy manufacturers who have hired him to create monsters for their own companies. That's right. Companies Aww. such as uh, mm. Otaku America, Hop Toys. Uh, he did the Misfit series, a robot monster, the thing from another world. Spiral Toys. He made a Godzilla and other kaiju monsters. And guys, I, I'm just thrilled that we have him here at Monster Party, and that and that we started this young lad on his very successful career as a toy designer. Did we? And, um, yes, we did, yes. and I'm happy to have some, him some, here. With some us. would argue, some would argue, his talent did that. But yes, okay. but <laughs> I am so thrilled. I'm I'm filled with joy to have him for our holiday gift guide, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for Kevin Smith. Hey, Yay! Hey, happy holidays, everybody. Yeah. Oh, Kevin, first, it's great to see you, man. It's great I, to see you. Yeah, and, well. and you are still smooth and, and a beautiful <laughs> young man. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> but, but uh, buddy, you are, you're, you're in demand now. People Kinda? want your skills. I mean, yeah, it's nice. It's nice to be wanted. 
Yes, it is. <laughs> tell, yes. tell me what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but you know, Kevin, there's there's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of great, uh, interesting things out there. Can you maybe start us off by telling us uh, what would you get? the monster lover in in your life as the horror oh, okay. sci-fi monster fan that you are the horror sci-fi monster fan that i am well times are tough as we've noticed uh, <laughs> yeah. well, high. I, I don't know what you're talking about. no what? matt doesn't no. know what i'm talking about no. okay. uh, well see everything seems fine to me for you non one percenters <laughs> out there uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah that's me oh that's me yeah <laughs> Uh, here's a fun uh, stocking stuffer idea I've been thinking okay. about and have done in the in the past. Um, I also work at a library. I'm a librarian, and I see a lot of horror books come in and out Ooh, of here. Uh, right? Those are never going away. That's true. Uh, there's a lot of horror books in the public domain, and they range from free to however much money as you want. And a lot of them make great stocking stuffers. And I don't know if a lot of people know just how many things are in the public domain you have huh. all of hp lovecraft you have sure. dracula frankenstein true Poe, chambers true. king and yellow algernon blackwood you've got hg wells you have all these great authors and all of their content is free now just about and you can find cheap publications stuff them in you know stockings start book clubs with your friends anything like that as little as like five bucks for some of these things um you know if you're tight on cash books are wow. great that's, That's true. Right. Yeah. I always so. th I always think of like movies, you know, in public domain, but not books, you know. Yeah, it, it, there's so many more books than films out there, you know, and a yeah. lot of people haven't read. They've seen the movie, they haven't necessarily read the book either, and then they'll right. find, wow, this is so much different than yep. the films I've seen <laughs> of it as well. So, well, yeah. one of the things also that you can do in regards to what you just suggested <laughs> is that uh, I'm a big fan of archive.org. Yes, and, oh, yes. yes, and there yes. you can get, get you know. Visit public domain movies and just all kinds of things, but Cartoons. a lot of, a lot of books and magazines. And so what I suggested last year was get a drive. And yes. Just kill that right, right. drive with right. all these public domain titles. And then, you know, next time you go on a trip, you got that drive, you plug it in your computer, you got reading till the end of time. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm. That's true. Even, even YouTube. There's a lot of people that do audiobooks for free. Even That's true. Uh, yes. Doug, right. Doug Bradley Pinhead reads Lovecraft and Poe on his channel wow. and you can just play it in the cool. background. Yeah. Hey, for free. Kevin, have you cool. ever listened to uh, horror babble? No, I haven't. That's listened another to good one. Yeah. That's a good one on YouTube. Yeah. 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 Let's not a lot of Lovecraft stuff. Yeah. yeah. No, but Ooh, you know, that's a great Pinhead's idea. got such a great voice. <laughs> you yes, know? yes. So he, true. and he, you know, takes his time, reads the whole story. So yeah, give it a try. Explore any public domain you can and you know, give, give, give. It's cheap. That's so, a great love idea. It. Love I that like idea. That. Yeah. I yeah. like that. That's cool. Okay. Who's got another one? Well, you know, to go from cheap. <laughs> Maybe something a little expensive. Um, there is something that that has it, it, it's. I, I can't say you can necessarily get it for Christmas, but you kind of need to pre-order it now. Okay. Okay. And it's something that when I saw this, I flipped out. And I tell you, if if any of the listeners decide to get one of these for me and and send me a little envelope that says <laughs> I got this for you and it's coming in summer, <laughs> I would be oh. thrilled. Um, How pathetic! You guys are. You guys are from what, what? What? Come on! If someone's gonna get it for me, wow! <laughs> and, and. Now we all are familiar with Super Seven, right? Super yes. Seven, oh, yeah. the yes. great company. Toy company, right? I mean, their their philosophy. You know, we grew up with giant monsters, comic books, punk and science fiction, skateboard, robots, and rebellion. No one made the toys that we wanted, so we made it ourselves. And guys, what they have made is. It's nearly two feet tall. It is a Mecha Godzilla, a Toho Super Shogun Mecha Godzilla. It runs about four hundred dollars. <laughs> is that it? Uh, yeah. Start and saving your money, listeners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it's <laughs> it's estimated Mary to needs ship some in, sugar. In, in in summer, you know, in twenty twenty three. But it stands twenty inches tall. Is is and it vinyl? Is it a vinyl figure? No, it's it, a hard it, plastic. Remember, it's a hard plastic. You know, like the the. Do you remember the Shogun Godzilla? And oh, yeah, uh, yeah. do you remember that? <clears throat> the original. Sure. Well, they, yeah. Yeah. Well, they made one the same size, and it shoots. It it shoots like little missiles. 
and is it, it the original uh, Mecha Godzilla from the yes, 70s? Yep. Yes, it yeah. is. And it's huh. so cool and it's so neat. But the thing is, is right now it's it's like the pre-order time and you know they're not right, going right. to offer it forever. And look, it is true that when I talk to the Super 7 people about making big toys and they go, well, Larry, you know, only about 50 people out there like you would spend the money. Well, I believe there's more people out there that would put that kind of money down for such an amazing toy. So if there's someone out That's there that cool. wants to I mean, spend 400 bucks on on a 20 inch Mecha Godzilla thick plastic that fires missiles, I mean, and you can you can have that battle your original uh, 1979 Shogun Godzilla if you have it, like true. I do, <clears throat> or or you can use the the Super Seven Godzilla that came out back in 2015, and you could battle Mecha Godzilla. So look, it's a beautiful toy. It is an expensive toy, but it's something that, guys, if you get it, you're going to love it. So wow. I, knew again, cool. I knew you were going to bring that one up. Yeah, <laughs> I avoided yes, that should. one, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw uh, it at Designer Con. It's huge. It's got shelf presence. You, you, it's not oh, going to be disappointing wow. at all. Wow. It's, it's uh, great. Uh, yeah, and of course, I'm thinking, oh, oh, I wonder if they're going to make a, a, a Hedorah, a, you know, a Smog Monster. Wouldn't that be cool? Or That'd maybe be cool. Didn't bring yeah, the Rodan yeah. back. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. There, they can make a gigant, guys. I would pay that kind of money. I, I'd go without food for days so I could get that <laughs> a toy. So, I mean, there's a lot I'd go without to get that thing. So, anyway, that, that is there cool. is that's super from cool. super from Super Seven, the Toho Super Shogun God, Mecha Godzilla. But just to let you know, guys, it's it's not going to be around forever because. They're taking so many orders and then they're going to cap it. So <clears throat> right, right, right. You, you're going to need to jump on it soon. Nice. Nice. That's cool. Love it. That's cool. Good pick. Thank you, Irregular Joe. Now, yes. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you give us one? All right. I have, uh, as you know, I'm the Blu-ray guy, so I have to uh, yeah. uh, let people know about all the cool <laughs> Blu-ray releases in, in the genre area. Right, Blu-ray Joe. That's right, Blue Ray Joe. <laughs> so, uh, regular Joe, your Blue Ray Joe. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, just recently, uh, the good people at Synapse Films oh, yeah. uh, released a really great, very elusive Bigfoot horror film from the seventies. Uh, this one is called Creature from Black Lake, nineteen seventy six, and it's just a great atmospheric. Uh, low budget horror flick. Two college students uh, search for Bigfoot in Louisiana, and soon the creature starts stalking them. Uh, John David Carson, Dennis Fimple, he's a very familiar character actor, and the great Jack Elam is in it. Dub Taylor, another great character actor. And it's just great. It's just these guys go out in the wilderness, not really, you know, thinking they got it all, all figured out and they're going to get photos or prove the existence of Bigfoot and they they're terrorized by the creature and it's great. It's a uh, super atmospheric. It uses a lot of the genuine town locals in the film, much like uh, legend of Boggy Creek. In fact, it's a perfect double feature with that movie. And, and the cinematography is by Dean Cundy who uh, oh, did like yeah. Halloween and lots of sure. Carpenter films. Yeah. Um, mm. It's great. In fact, the, the Blu-ray release has an interview with Dean on it. It's like a 4K restoration, just commentary track. Uh, really great film. Again, one of those movies that up to now you can only have a crappy, you know, VH rip of it, or you know, I mean, it's never been even released on DVD officially. So now you can get a beautiful Blu-ray of it. Creature from Black Lake from Synapse Films. Check it out. Bigfoot, no, very your cool. Bigfoot in your big stocking. Isn't that That's nice? right? Wow. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Love it. Nice. nice. All right. All right. How about Who's you, next? James? James. Well, traditionally, you guys scoop the figures from distinctive dummies uh, before I even know about them. And then by the time <laughs> I, I see them on your shelves, it's too late. You got to move I, fast. <laughs> I know. And then they're, you know, they're priced out. But I was very excited to find this Kathy Bates misery figure. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. What? Yes. Uh, I didn't from- even. Oh. From mm-hmm. Distinctive Dummies, it's one ninth scale. Uh, Please tell me there's accessories. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, there's, there's, some, there's a mallet and of course a mallet. A mallet, of course, a mallet. Now, I was I was considering getting like a Kate Jackson Charlie's Angels Mego figure and trying to customize <laughs> it. And w- one of our listeners even uh, l- even told me that there there was a Titanic figure of Kathy Bates that I could try to customize. I'm like, <laughs> you know, if I need, you know, if I'm that desperate, but, but no, 
company called Horror Homes had this commissioned, I guess, by Distinctive Dummies, and then they've been selling it uh, retail. It was going for under 200 and um, it's starting to creep up a little bit in price. Yeah, yeah. And if I may sort of add on to that, another company called Green Pod Customs had Distinctive Dummies do a Donald Sutherland, Matthew Bennell. Stop. Oh, no. 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 Don't, don't tell anyone purpose. to get that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't you dare. And it comes There's with only a little, so many left. And it I comes need with a, one. A, 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 a little, a little bulldog with a human face. Oh, and oh, that, that, oh. That, 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 that caps it. I mean, no, that in the no, little pod. Yeah, he's making yeah. it up. It's all a lie. They're all <laughs> well, sold out. It's done. Chance, are there only, are there only so many of them? Well, they're, yeah, they always make limited, limited amounts. They're always it's like limited. And, fifty and or hundred or something. Yeah, and Don't I fall asleep uh, on it, folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They had advertised it as a one six scale figure. And then when I got the one ninth, I, I wrote to them and I said, you know, is, was there a, an error in the listing? And, and they were like, oh, no, it's, it was always one ninth. But uh, if you don't want it, you can send it back because these are already going for more than what you paid for it. I'm like, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, 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 I'll keep it. I'll keep <laughs> no, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's Mego sized, basically. It's Mego yeah. sized. Yeah. 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 But, but both of these figures are beautiful. And if you can get your hands on them, no, you can't. Definitely. You can't get your hands on them because they're all gone. <laughs> because <laughs> there's not <laughs> really wants one. Yeah. No. no, no it's all done. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Boy, doesn't Christmas suck? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, James. <laughs> oh. Matt, who knows? Maybe Chris Kringle somehow, you know, maybe he'll, he'll come through one day. You never know. Maybe he will. Maybe he Matt, will. Matt, yeah, he- if it's if it's any consolation, I don't I've given up hope on ever finding a distinctive dummy's calling Clive Dr. Frankenstein figure. Mm, yeah. uh, you want the With, color one, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I did it- find the Pretorius, but the Dr. Frankenstein is very elusive. All yeah. right. Okay. A, All right. That's hard to get. Yeah. No, yep. I mean, distinctive dummies, you know, Martin Cage does such a great job with all those figures and you know, uh, yeah, they're available for like a second and then they're sold out. Yeah. So yeah, you got to get on their mailing list. And yes. I mean, that's, that's something I would recommend right now can, is it can, get on that mailing like, list. Can yeah. we write a letter and ask him make a few more? I mean, come on, what, <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah. Write him a letter. So well, decide well you, guys, four, you guys, dear are, you Martin, guys, how are you? you guys, I am fine. You, you, guys, you guys claim to, be, oh, you and Martin Cage, you guys are old buddies. It's like, well, just just send them an, a little email and go, hey, instead of making you know, 100, why don't you make like we, we 300? Can't ask him to completely yeah, upend it, it, his business it, it, model. Remember, it's like literally just him, I think, you know, like making these. I mean, uh, it's I him, mean, he, yeah, and yeah. a bottle oh. of paint. And, you yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> and wait, a wait, wait, printer. wait, he makes it in his apartment and in, in what, I don't Gilroy? know. What, I mean, come on. Does he's he, got, he's we, got he's in, you know, like in yeah. Hong Kong. Come on, Sean. He could get I think it's Thailand. or something. Thailand, <laughs> Thailand. Come on. Pennies on that, the dollar. Does that somehow make it different? Oh, Thailand. Well, Thailand. <laughs> Thailand. <laughs> that puts a whole different spin on it. All right. But yes, right. if he could make some more of that figure, that would be great. But uh, so <laughs> I expect you to help me, Larry. <laughs> And you need to get in touch with him and force him to create another <laughs> round of those figures. Yes. All, All right. right. Well, maybe, maybe he could do like a variation. Maybe like a I don't want a variation. Jacket. I want the figure. <laughs> <laughs> no variations. Wait, the Donald Sutherland? Yes, I want it exactly well, how you know, James got I, it. Well, I hear and because Sean, the, I haven't the, forgotten you. Yes, no, I no, did get no, it too. But the facial expression is the famous one where he's all. Ooh. Yes, what about just true. a regular? What about his regular Joe I look? Don't what, what about want his regular what, what, Joe face? What about what about Jeff Goldblum from the film? We could just no. have him like sing in a chair or something. <laughs> How about Leonard Nimoy? Leonard Nimoy was in the film. I right. hate every one of you. How dare you? <laughs> no. Uh, no, I want right. Donald Sutherland screaming like a maniac and the dog. <laughs> That's Great. what I want. I don't want I no I know <laughs> Veronica Cartwright. No. Uh-uh. Uh well, all right. Well, happy holidays. Right. Why don't happy you go holidays. next? <laughs> right. Yeah, go ahead. Jesus. Okay. Well, I'm gonna throw you one that's a little different. A little okay. bit different. Because all right. we as collectors. Now, we collect all this stuff, but usually the displaying part, sometimes at least, can be an afterthought. You know, you get a bunch yeah, of these yeah. things and you go, well, how am I going to display this? How am I, what, do I, what do I do? Where do I put it? 
You know, what, what, what other it. toys do I have to move out of the way and make exactly. room for? Yeah. Right. You know, you take a photo of it and put it in a box. Right. That's right. Yeah. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and never see it again. <laughs> never, <laughs> never touch it again. I never oh. thought of it this way, but with with you and your figures, Larry, it's almost like you're a serial killer. Like you, like you. <laughs> it's like you take your little Polaroid of your figure and then it goes. Back in you're, the you're, like, you're like Terrence Stamp from The Collector. You just right. like yeah. only oh, yeah. toys instead of women. Yeah. And they're just <laughs> all those figures are just biding their time till you slip up. <laughs> <laughs> they can get out again. But um, uh, but OK, so, yeah, you got all these figures. You got this collection and, um, you know, it might be an afterthought. How do I display them? But what if somebody gave you as a gift? A cabinet, a display <gasps> cabinet. Mm, yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? Because sure. that might be the type of thing that you would you wouldn't necessarily immediately get for yourself. Right, right. You might say, "Oh, you know what? Down the line, I'm going to get a case." And but I would suggest, and these have worked for me very well. But you go to IKEA. Just go to IKEA. Yeah. And there is there is a cabinet, and it's called. I, I I'm not sure if this is the way to pronounce it, but it's called Detolf. D- yes, D- we have one. Oh, see, of course right. you do. They're great. They're of great. Of course you do. D E T O L F. That's what you look for. I think for the most part, they come in black and brown. It's like a black brown kind of combination, kind of a wood grain. Yeah. And they're beautiful right. and they're not too big. They come already set up so you can put a light in it. Mm. Uh, the, the case itself is about a hundred bucks, which isn't that bad. No. And oh, you, you no. of course, have to put it together yourself. Now, I have I have become very good at putting them together by myself. I do not <laughs> suggest your average person do this. Uh, get right. someone else to do it with you because you got these big <clears throat> panes of, uh, of glass that can be right. a little dangerous. So get <laughs> right. someone to help you. The dimensions are 16 and 3 fourths by 64 and 1 eighth. And so that's a pretty good size. It's got four layers and right. you can put a lot of stuff in this. And then to get the light to put in it is like an extra 10 bucks. It's nothing. And right. they sell them right at Ikea. And you'll be surprised. You, know, you put this thing together and you put those figures in there and you do your little themes or however you want to do it. And all of a sudden now it's like, it's become an art piece. Your collection has become an art piece. It's become right. important. It's like, right. it's, it's like, a, it's like, it's a museum. Mm. Right. And, but now here's, here's the dangerous part because <laughs> once you get one, you're going to want another <laughs> <Right>. and <laughs> another and another. It's, it's like eating like, Lay's potato chips. You just can't stop. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I, for me, I would say Pringles, but that's okay. Pringles. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Doritos. Yeah. Right. But they're great, and it's a really affordable way to do the case thing. Um, cool. Yes, you can buy a fancier case. You can even buy a fancier case at IKEA. But this is really, I think, what you need. It's basic. It because it doesn't have too much ornamentation on it. It doesn't take away from right. the figures. This particular model is the best at utilizing space because right. it's all cabinet. It's all glass. And um, I think that anybody that you got this for would love it. I certainly could use three or four more cases right now. Wow. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. That's wow. cool. That and, 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 and Kevin, that can... you have one too, right? I do. And what's cool is you could see it from all angles. It's not like a bookshelf right. where you have to yes. walk up, you know, and see it from the right, front. You right. can see it, you know, three it's of the co- four angles if you got it up against the wall. If, if you had it in the middle of the room, you could walk around it and it's glass all over the place. Yeah. And you could still um, put stuff on top of it too. That's right. Know? Yes. So, which I do. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. Nice. I like it. Good piece of furniture. Matt, right, Matt, Kevin. you can Matt, you can put your invasion of the body snatchers figure I in there. Hate you. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> right. You know what? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna have that case, and I'm just gonna have this like little empty area. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I and I'm gonna put a sticker with a frown on it. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, Kevin, what do you got for us next? Okay, so as a kid, I would have hated this because it's clothing, but since I'm an adult, <laughs> I kind of need clothes now. Uh, I have found Cavity Colors clothing. Has it, have any of you heard of that before? No. What is it called? Huh? They're called Cavity Colors, and they're no. a clothing company, an apparel company 
and they have shirts, they have sweaters, they have socks, they have bre- they have everything you'd want, but they're all themed around licensed sci-fi and horror products. Really? Ooh. And the shirt, all their clothes are really good quality. They just recently got the Godzilla license this year. Uh-oh. So they've been pumping no. those out, but oh. they've been doing, you know, here, let me scroll over to their collections. They've got aliens, American psycho. They got Godzilla. They got Mars attacks. They got poltergeist predator. They got everything you could think wow. of Halloween, all the Jason child's play, everything in, huh. in there. So is it like is, shirt, shirt, shirts, long sleeve shirts? Like it's, all kinds it's of- all of them. They got t-shirts, they got long sleeves, they got jogger sweatpants, uh, they got nice. hoodies, Ooh. sweaters, tank tops. Wow. Do they have like Velcro tearaway pants? I'm just curious. Uh, I'll, I'll write them a letter. <laughs> <laughs> my mine are getting kind of frayed. So. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I I could convert some for you if you want. <laughs> if you uh, do that, that would be awful. Yeah. Sweet. They've even got a uh, Lucio Fulci collection there. Oh, so, nice. So Ooh. yeah, you know, they they really do their homework here with these. So yeah, I would recommend yeah. any anybody. Who listens to the show to check out their website? Oh, I like that. Colors dot com. Uh, you'll find I have a, I have a really clothes. nice um, work shirt, black work shirt of the Beyond. Mm-hmm. Oh, all cool, this, cool! All this, all these great graphics on it, but it's one of those things where it's like, I love it. But I, where do I wear this? <laughs> <laughs> Weddings, <laughs> you know. Like, right. uh, yeah. <clears throat> all right. So. Neat. If you yeah, need like clothes, that, go Let's there. Check out. You got check it. Check that out. Yeah. Oh, Sounds good. Clothes. Clothes. Uh, <laughs> I know. You know, it's it's know. one of those things. You know, the wife complains that you you rather spend your money on toys than clothes. Well, now you can get cool clothes. Yeah. 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 Thank, thank you, Kevin. Well, yeah. I. I I'm saving some clothes things for later, but okay. Let's you know now that we're here at the holidays, what do people like to have that can smell up the room and make it smell very holiday like? A mm. nice a, pot a candle? No, <laughs> oh no, no, a nice wonderful candle. Now okay. this is kind of funky. Um, you guys remember that I did the collector's call show and I showed my creature collection. I do, yes. yes. Yeah. Sure. So, so I I was introduced to a lot of creature fans out there, and someone reached out to me and they said, "Hey, Larry, have you checked out this gal who makes creature candles?" I'm like, oh, "What? Mm. What? What?" There's this lovely young lady out of Chicago. Her name is Stephanie, and her company is called Spooky Sense, and she is an artist. And she makes handmade horror themed candles. Hmm. And Stephanie is a diehard horror fan and she's a big cosplay artist. Oh, and wow. um, yeah, she's really talented and she has made the selection of amazing horror themed candles. One of which is it's a candle that is it's it's blue and there's a creature from the Black Lagoon head in it. It's got a beautiful label and it smells like the ocean. It's so nice. I don't know but, about uh, that. Well, well, this perhaps <laughs> is like algae? That you would like. No, 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 no. No, like she, that's nice, really what you want. A candle ocean. that smells like the beach. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's well. one. This is something you'll like, Matt. This is what she calls her groovy candle Ooh. and it is it's like an an evil dead type with the uh-huh. uh, it's got a smell of like pine and leather uh, oh, it's got the little little uh, and, 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 and then and on the top of the candle, it's got like a That's chainsaw cool. and the the evil dead book. And, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, nice. God, it's and it smells so good. Anyway, th- this, this you know what, Larry, is, Larry, yeah. if we if you and I were to form a comedy team, I would want it to be called Pine and Leather. <laughs> well look guys i i've been i've been going back and forth with this gal stephanie and she's just amazing i have picked up a couple of these creature candles and they're wonderful i got a few others but guys she's also done a screen candle uh, a halloween candle a skull and brain candle she even did a stay puffed toasted marshmallow candle which is nice. perfect for the holidays yes now all her candles are handmade by Stephanie herself out of Chicago. They're, so they're not mass produced. And because she's an artist, she kind of does this in her spare time. All the candles, because they're little works of wonderful smelling art, they're about 25 bucks a piece plus shipping. Oh, and that's not bad. What, I'd, no. I mean, yeah. what I'd suggest is to, to check out her stuff. 
You can Google Instagram Spooky Sense, S-P-O-O-K-Y-S-C-E-N-T-S, and you'll come up to, it'll say <laughs> Stephanie at Spooky Sense, and you can just, you'll can you see all the candles there, and you can message her and say, ooh, I really like that, and and she can arrange that with you. Um, cool. Uh, or, or you can, or she, she tells me she's also on Shopify which I, I haven't checked out, but guys, I would strongly check out Spooky Scents on Instagram and these candles smell great. And uh, it's possible that some of you might be getting one for Christmas. <laughs> uh, right. okay. now, now, uh, uh, Larry, I'm curious because knowing you, now are these candles that if the ones that you got for yourself, uh, would you light them though? Because they're going to be, or do, do you get two of them each? Like, oh, do you light one? How does that work? What do you, what do you think, buddy? I get two. <laughs> you get three. Yeah. Or, cause, because because you want to perfect... light one of them, right? Yeah. 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 But, but it's like I have – what's great is in my one of my creature cabinets, I have her amazing creature candle with a little creature head, and it sits there. It sits there in the cabinet. And the funny thing is every time I open the cabinet, oh, this Right, because you can still get the aroma. Oh, right. yeah. It's still right. so great. But then I have another one in right, the bathroom. Right. and But, of course, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need more. You know, of course. yeah. So, great. so Stephanie and I, we we've, we've kind of hit it off, and and it's she's she's a lovely young lady, and again, she's a horror fan just like us. That's so, awesome. You you should try to get her to make a candle that has the scent of seventies air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, guys. Sense. Yes, check her out on Instagram, Spooky Sense. You'll when you Google it, it'll come up Stephanie at Spooky Sense, and you could see everything there. I strongly suggest that you check it out. Love it! Yay! Very cool. cool. All right. Uh, okay. So uh, as far as action figures, this is a, a figure that I've waited a long time to come out, and uh, I'm so glad it did. Uh, this has been out for a while now, but you can get it right now. And this is. Okay, so as you guys know, uh, I'm a huge Three Stooges fan. Yes. And mm -hmm. as far as uh, action figures go, there's a great company called Figures Toy Company. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. That has that put out like every possible iteration of, of <laughs> the Three Stooges, uh, sure. whether it's Curly or Shemp. Like, in other words, like the, the, the clothing from whatever different short it is, you know, whether they're doctors or yeah. mechanics. And they're, perfect. they're amazing. They're great. And there's a set that they came out with Larry, Moe, and Curly from a one of my favorite Three Stooges short, which is called Idle Rumors. And that's rumors spelled R-O-O-M-E-R-S. And this was the classic Three Stooges short from 1944 where they're hotel bellboys. And there's a, there happens to be a sideshow promoter uh, staying at the hotel who has a sideshow attraction in a cage in his room of Lupe the Wolfman. <laughs> and, and, and of course the, the the stooges you know they're also like the house cleaning staff and they are cleaning the room and, and lupe gets loose and causes all kinds of chaos so figures toy company has now put out lupe the wolf Ooh, <laughs> hey. the first the first monster related character from wow. a three from the three stooges universe that's and cool. it's fantastic because it's a great short it's like it's, it's lupe the sideshow owner goes oh yeah he's gentle as the kitten unless he, he hears music then he goes insane of so, of <laughs> so of course the stooges think oh let's play music i'll calm him down <laughs> it goes crazy but it's just a classic three stooges short and Lupe is this kind of great, like hulking wolf kind of monster. And Figures Toys Company put out a figure of him. So now I have Lupe to go with my three Stooges figures. And it's great. Nice. Uh, so, and it's reasonably priced, like between it's around 20 to 25 bucks. And uh, it's on Figures Toy Company. You know, they put out tons of Super Friends figures and tons of tons of great figures. But this is the first official monster character from the Three Stooges short that they put out. And I, they're actually going to be putting out more. They're going to be putting out a mummy figure and hopefully others. But uh, if you're a Stooge fan and you're into action figures, you got to get Lupe the Wolfman. <laughs> I will. I love it. Cool. I'm looking at it now. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it looks great wow. on your shelf. It's a pretty good pretty good likeness of the, <laughs> of the, of the guy in, from the short. So, so check it out. Very cool. Nice, nice one, Sean. All right. You guys know that one of the Japanese collectibles that I've started collecting in recent years is the Sono Sheets. And these are little uh, booklets. Yeah. Yes. And um, I'm holding up one now with uh, Gamera versus Gaios. And it's, nice. these are little booklets with floppy records and they're all vintage. 
I can't play the records, but the artwork is great. A lot of times they have cross sections of the monsters. Right, uh, right. You, you guys also know that I recently moved and now I have my very own man cave, cool. uh, which I'm going to set up as the ultimate display room. And the man cave Yay. has its own man cave has its own bathroom. So for the first time in, in my life, I have my own bathroom. So I started looking up, you know, ways to customize my bathroom. And I thought, okay, wh what if I just type in Gamera shower curtain? So <laughs> I, I, I typed that into Google. And the very first thing that came up was this gorgeous, and this was on Red Bubble, this gorgeous mural size oh my gosh. recreation of the cover of the Sono Sheet. Oh my gosh. Ga Gamera versus Gauss. Wow. And it's That's amazing. absolutely yeah. beautiful. Now you it can sing the tune in the shower. That's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it ran about a hundred bucks, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't not. This was just too freaky and beautiful. Yeah, that's and awesome. And it's just, I was so happy to find it. And um, it's just like you go on Redbubble and Etsy and a lot of these crafts vendors make these things themselves. They're, yeah. I'm, I'll bet nine times out of 10, they're not officially licensed. Right. But can, I was looking for a birthday present for Larry that was going to double as a housewarming gift when he moved into a new place. And I found like a bath mat from the creature from the black lagoon pinball machine. Right. Oh, cool. And I was like, I was like, what, the, what else? It's Pandora's box. You, you start looking at what these Etsy <laughs> people are doing. It's like, Holy yeah, shit, yeah. there's yeah. all this stuff out there. So yeah. it's, it's fun. And I recommend our listeners, you know, go down that rabbit hole because you never oh, yeah. know what you're going to find. The last, last couple of years, even stuff for, for my wife, Gina, like I've been actually going to Etsy a, a lot, if not more than eBay to find cool stuff, you know, just a unique original stuff, you know, it's very unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, That's cool. So there you go. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Good pick. It looks beautiful. Yeah. yeah the resolution is. Is. looks really yeah. nice. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how they did that. I don't know how they did that. Yeah. Blow it up that I mean, big. You could do a. You could even just hang it up as a mural. It doesn't even yeah. have to be a shower. Yeah. It's just right. gorgeous. All right, uh, Matt. What do you got? Okay, so these are some figures that, in addition to the distinctive dummies invasion of the body snatchers figure, these are like the other figures that I want. Mm, okay. And these are way easier to find. So these figures are affordable. And they're so nice. And especially if you're a rock guy like I am. <laughs> I have since high school been a giant fan of ACDC. Oh, uh, yeah. NECA has come out with these Vigo size. I guess we would call that one ninth size. Yeah. Figures with clothes and accessories of Bon Scott and Angus Young. <laughs> and taken from the highway to hell music video, like what, what they were wearing in that. Right. And they're great. Both figures come with alternate heads. <laughs> Angus Young comes with two sets of hands, two hats and a guitar. Bond just comes with a mic and, and another head, of course. Now, both these figures are really nicely sculpted, but the Bond Scott one is just spot on and mm. as an acdc fan over the years when you see acdc collectibles it's always like instead of bond scott it's always like a brian johnson thing where it's they always lean toward back in black you know the second incarnation i guess of the band uh you could say the third if you count their original singer which by the way go on youtube and and look up the original singer for ACDC, it's 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 interesting to see how a band would be so different with just <laughs> one thing changed. <laughs> but uh, but these figures are wonderful, and they they look so nice, and I want them both. And I in my IKEA cases, I've got one level that's a music level, and it needs to expand anyway because it's getting crowded. But I've got like Spinal Tap figures and the Monkees and mm -hmm. Ozzy and. And mm. the Ramones. And so this would be the perfect addition. These two figures. Now, these are the type of things that if you want to get them for someone, they go for like 30 to 40 bucks each. That's not bad. What's the yeah. company, Matt? Is it NECA? It's NECA. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You and can't go uh, wrong with them. you can't go yeah, wrong. Yeah. And, yeah. And they, they really do. They do quality work that's affordable. 
as much as I love Migo, this is like, I would say, just a step up when it comes to quality. Uh, you know, all the stitching and everything else of the clothes and, right, and right. That, those kind of details. But you can get them at Entertainment Earth, uh, the Forbidden Planet website. Uh, you can also get them at Big Bad Toy Store. And like I said, yeah, 30 to 40 bucks and you're on the highway to hell. <laughs> cool. Nice. I like nice. it. Nice. All right, all Kevin. Right. Okay. So to continue where uh where James went with his, I was on Etsy the other day, and there is this Etsy seller named Mr. Zombies Workshop. No spaces. Ooh. Ooh. Um, but they they specialize in domino-sized horror VHS fridge magnets that perfectly replicate. I all think I've the, seen those. Yeah, they yes. all of they're meticulous, like all the VHS covers you'd find in like a, a rental store back yes. in the day with stickers they're and like stuff, teeny they're, like they're like miniature they're, they're like a VHS domino size but boxes. they're all fridge magnets yes and they have every obscure and well-known title you can imagine of all of these little yeah. horror films and you can just stick them all over your fridge they're, they're fridge magnets but they're so perfectly yeah yeah recreated it's just cool to have you know and you can order yep. as many as you want you can order one two whatever but you know find your favorite movie as a fridge magnet in vhs form and you know yeah how much, I think I've seen How much these two? Yes. They're like six bucks, you know. Yeah. You grab them right. two or three at a time, whatever you want, yeah. whatever you need to hold up on your fridge. You know, they, they look like strong <laughs> enough magnets, but but yeah, oh. like I was really impressed when I saw these. So yeah, I yeah, saw cool. this too. Check them out. Really cool. uh, Mr. Zombies Workshop, uh, wow. no spaces. So go check out. I do love out. the fridge magnets. I yeah. Say. yeah. Everybody yeah. needs them. They're functional, yes. you know? Yes. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is nice, Kevin. Yeah. That is really right. nice. You yeah. Know, and I'm, I'm actually glad that you brought up Etsy because, again, when you're a creature fan like me, you know, sometimes you're searching all over the place for, for new creature things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it was funny when I was doing the search, I came across, you had mentioned clothing earlier. And uh, there is this great site called Crazy for Me Style. It's crazy and the number four, Me Style. And it's this lovely young lady named Yasmina. And she and her husband are huge creature from the Black Lagoon fans. But also they, they love like pinup stuff, uh, kitschy, mid-century modern stuff. Mm -hmm. And so she designs all of these images that she sells on these shirts – and she has a bunch of the creature. And I saw this one, which is the creature from the Black Lagoon holding hands with a beautiful young lady with a brunette hair. And I thought, gee, would it be cool? My wife has blonde hair. This woman's a small business owner. What if I say, hey, can you change the hair to blonde? And so I reached out to her and she said, no problem, Larry. And she changed the, draw the drawing from brunette hair to blonde hair. And so I got that for my wife. So it's the creature holding hands with the girl huh. in the water Aww. with blonde hair. And there also happened to be a little white dog. Well, we have a little white dog, too. So it was almost like, oh, my God, this is perfect <laughs> for me. But, <laughs> but because they're big creature fans, they also have – there's like a creature wearing like a smoking jacket, kind of very Hugh Hefner-like. There's <laughs> one cool. like a Halloween-like. And if you <clears throat> check out her stuff, it's so – all the stuff that she has is cool – Again, some of the stuff is kitschy, uh, very 50s-esque, but it's wonderful stuff. Sure, maybe the shirts might be maybe a little more expensive. They're like 30, 35 bucks or so. But again, she's a small business owner. She designs all of these herself. She makes these herself, and they're just lovely. Again, crazy for me style. Her name is Yasmina. Uh, if you like creature like me or you like kitschy stuff, check out her stuff on Etsy. It's wonderful. Nice. Very, Very good. good. Cool. Always support uh, small businesses and, you know, local artists. Yeah. Good, well, yeah. That's right. Good creative, that's right. Creative, creative artists like you, my friend. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank True. you. True. Yeah. Okay. I have another Blu-ray for you. This is from Vinegar Syndrome. Now, this is probably Paul Nashi's most celebrated, maybe his best uh, werewolf film. And that is The Werewolf versus The Vampire Woman. 1971, directed by Leon Klimovsky, who directed several other Nashi films like Dr. Jekyll versus the Werewolf, Vengeance of the Zombies, and he also directed a great film called The Vampire's Night Orgy. But this uh, <laughs> this film, I believe, is the third in the Waldemar Daninsky saga of uh, Nashi werewolf films. And this one, he teams up with two 
gorgeous, beautiful women uh, who unknowingly uh, resurrect a vampire countess while searching for the sacred silver cross that Waldemar is hoping will cure him of his uh, lycanthropy curse. Uh, but of course, something goes wrong and the countess, the vampire countess comes to life and she starts seducing and turning the women into vampires. Meanwhile, Waldemar is turning into a werewolf every full moon and killing people. And it is just this one in particular, like all the plants cut just a line. It's like the perfect Euro horror film from the 70s. It really is super atmospheric because Klamovsky loves to do slow motion. Lots of great like slow motion fog shrouded scenes of the countess, you know, stalking the women. And and I, I, I don't know what it is about Nashi. He he uh, he always casts the most stunningly hot women in his movies. Uh, yeah. Gabby Fuchs, Barbara Capel, Patty Shepard, all these actresses are in some of his other films too. And they're just stunning. They're just so gorgeous and not very shy about taking off their clothes a lot of times too. Uh, mm. But, uh, but I mean, this movie is, is, he's a werewolf fighting with the vampire countess. You know, that from the seventies, that line of magazines we've talked about before called eerie publications. Yes. Oh yes. Where you had those, mm. they were like a knockoff of the Warren publications. Sure. You know, they were like, much more garish and violent and crazy. And those covers, you'd always have like monsters fighting each other. The werewolf versus the vampire woman comes the closest to a live action version of those eerie publication covers. It's just that kind of vibe and that kind of movie. And it's fantastic. And this is this uh, Blu-ray set from Nigger Syndrome. It's a 4K restoration. There's like three different cuts of the film. Uh -huh. There's a there is a feature length documentary on Nashi on this disc uh, with like interviews with Landis and McGarris, Caroline Monroe talking about Nashi, tons of interviews, archival material, poster art, and all this. It's just is like the ultimate release of this film. And it's like I said, it's probably the crowning achievement in Paul Nashi's career as far as that werewolf character. And this is the Blu-ray to get for sure. So to get it nice. while you can. So is this this is part of a trilogy, you said? Well, and it's more than a trilogy. There's okay. there's I'm not sure exactly how many. There's about like about Eight or nine, or eight maybe or nine, more okay. of, of of Nashi playing that character of Waldemar. Oh, Dubinsky. this is cool. Yeah, this is like, yeah. So this is like the by night almost. Yeah, kind of yeah. Feel, you know, like it's like is, yeah, and it's great. It's, it's you know, I've never yeah. heard of these. I'll have to yeah. check this oh, out. Oh, yeah. oh they're, they're all yeah, Nashi, I gotta really yeah. see these. Then. Yeah, okay, it's, great. It's also nice to see a movie where nudity is used for good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's actually it's not. It's, I, I, may, I may it sound strange, but it's not. It's somehow not exploitive in this movie. It's, no, of it's, course oh, not. It's yeah. very, <laughs> it's it's very <laughs> stale. No. There's, there's eroticism. Bring the family. Horror, and yeah, it's. Uh, but it is great. I'm telling you, it's just I'll really have to check satisfying. These, out. these sound really cool. Yeah, so, they're really cool. Yeah. That's a, that's a good one to start with, actually. To be honest, okay. I mean, so, yeah, some are better than others, and they he, they go kind sure. of some go kind of in strange directions, but. But this one is like primo example of a uh, Nashi uh, at his best. Then I'll have so, to find him. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So check it out. Vinegar cool. Syndrome. Nice. Nice. Uh, let's talk about Jaws stuff for a minute. Jaws. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Company called SD Toys has come out with what they call a movie poster 3D Ooh. of, the, of no. the Jaws poster. Now, years ago, there was a, a 3D poster of the actual poster with the credits and everything. Mm -hmm. this, is, mm -hmm. this is not that. This is just the image of the shark with the swimmer. And uh, it's, like trans, it's translucent. And one of the sort of one of the Ooh. cool things about it is that you can Whoa. you can sort of light it up. Wow. No. I saw this. I saw this. I love that. Stuff. And it's uh, unfortunately, for some reason, they decided to give the swimmer a bikini. Which, uh, okay, uh, like, come on, if you're going to go this much trouble, <laughs> yeah. you're going to do that. That's true, yeah. Um, well, you, you just have to paint, paint, just paint over, over it. Yeah. color. Yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah, just uh, get a, a little exacto knife and, and you know, follow <laughs> your <off>. muse. <laughs> and it, it retails, it's, a, it's about a foot tall and it retails for about 60 bucks. But if you're a big Jaws fan, it's like you sort of have to have it. I love it. And of it. course... As we know, NECA has finally released the Richard Dreyfuss Hooper figure. Yeah. Cool. And in two variations, where, where he's wearing like the denim with the uh, with the wool cap. And also... And the other one's the goodbye girl version. 
<laughs> if, if all, well, the other one is he's in the diving outfit. Oh, and, okay. Cool. And, and it's like, uh-huh. okay, it's it's reasonably priced, but if you have the denim one, it's like, why get the diving outfit one? Yeah, unless, yeah. unless you do what I did and customize your own cage. Oh, nice. Oh. Now you have to get a shark, though. I mean, yeah. Yeah, right. Oh, James, that's can get so these, cool. You can get these. And these are like bathroom accessories where you put soap in. But uh, it's I thought like, it was yeah, like a deep fryer. Like, <laughs> it's like all, all that. You can find one anywhere. So you get the right scale. You know, you get like a seven or eight inch little, little uh, metal grate thing. And now you've got a shark cage. That's cool. Nice. You can have wow. them slip so, on the soap. <laughs> <laughs> how do you do that like underwater that. i want to see that <laughs> true. and then true. finally uh, uh back to neck i know that we're not fans necessarily of the tiny tunes figures that they put out but they did do one of jaws eat it quint and there i have to say that there is something really satisfying about putting <laughs> screaming Screaming Quint into the shark's mouth. <laughs> That's true. And, okay. And I and I do enjoy this. So I like that. Uh, for the I Jaws like that. fan in your life, I recommend that. That's cool. Isn't, wow. isn't, it, isn't it interesting how like finally now there's this like it's kind of like the Batman 60s TV series. <laughs> years and years are waiting for like new merchandise to come out. And you know, finally did an explosion. Now it's happening with Jaws too, you know? Yeah. They need so to that, do a Jaws Christmas album where it's like done. <laughs> But the Roy Scheider NECA figure, I don't think it's been approved yet. They're still in licensing hell. So look for the look for the bootleg sculpts. Of yeah, the yeah, that would be the yeah. right. Optimize and yeah. right. Hopefully, are, somebody are, will put one out that's the right are, scale are, with the other one. Are they right, going to do right. a Quint one? Are they going to do a Quint one? They, they did, did a Quint one. They that did. Was, yeah, they did that one. That okay. was the first yeah. one they put out. Yeah, I love it's beautiful. It's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, great. that's cool. That's great. Unfortunately, sure. the worst Scheider one will, will be from Sequest DS9. I want it from Naked Lunch. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, true. <laughs> Dr. True. Benway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. What you like know, it. speaking of which, a line of Cronenberg figures. How cool would that be? Oh, where, oh, oh my God. Has somebody made a has somebody made a mugwump figure? Somebody <laughs> must make that at least. We need a mugwump figure at least. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. I want that typewriter. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it be great if they put like a little like a laptop that was made to <laughs> yeah yeah right that's cool all right all right Matt, what do you got well this is something that you guys are no strangers to but it's the type of thing that will bring a smile to anyone that it's given to it also mm-hmm. makes a very good stocking stuffer and that would be anything gosh upon mm, oh yes. yeah yeah, gosh yeah. Upon. now gosh upon these are the um japanese toys and trinkets and figures from vending machines and right. as we all know, we went to Japan. They're everywhere. Yeah. They're on every block. There are stores that are gashapon stores where that's just it's just one vending machine after another. And the type of things that you can get in these gashapon machines, I mean, it just the gamut is just unending. It's, I mean, you can get things like action figures, little dioramas from Ultraman, Godzilla stuff, flashlights. Fake you food, know, <laughs> fake food, right? Fake food, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. weird yeah. stuff. Yeah. Whatever you can think of, they've done it. And so, to get it in America, it might be a little challenging. Uh, if you go to a Japanese market, you can often find these things, not as much in the um quantity that you would get in Japan, but you can find them. Go to collector shops, and you can sometimes find these things. But if you ever get to Japan, I would suggest for presents for people, just go to these gashapon machines. They're it's it's they're not too expensive, and it's also usually a surprise what you get because you'll go to a machine and they'll have a you know they'll have pictures of all the different things that you can get in this machine, and right. so you don't really know which one you're going to get. Right, and so <laughs> it's fun to collect them all, but it's also nice to just go to various machines and get a variety of things and. They make great stocking stuffers and it's nice because, you know, if you wrapped them, you could open the wrapper and then 
it's like another wrapper inside. It's these <laughs> like plastic eggshells that you have to pop open to get to the toys or whatever they are. And I love them. I it's one of my favorite things about going to Japan, collecting these Goshapon figures and and seeing what's out there, really. Because yeah. every time I think that I've seen it all, there's like, what the hell is that? Yeah. There's a you know, it's a horse <laughs> on the toilet. And yeah, uh, but it's, <laughs> they're also scissors, you know, I'd like, what the fuck? And, uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it would help to go to Japan because you're going to get just the variety is, is there yeah. and, and you'll pay less for them. But, you know, if you go to some of these specialty shops, you can find this stuff. And I have never gotten anything gosh upon that I haven't enjoyed, even if it's something yeah. that I'm not really all that into. They usually do something different with either the molding or the presentation that just speaks to me. I wonder if there's like a, a if there's a guidebook, you know, this. I know there like, should be. There, I'm, yeah, I'm, I, maybe in Japan there just some like list. It would I be. Mean, it would be and, so I many mean, though. It would be you know twenty five volumes. Yeah, or like, maybe yeah. there's a website. Maybe there's yeah. a website somebody's put together. Some some obsessive person <laughs> about all the Gashapon. One thing yeah. I yeah, don't there's... know is how long this has been going on. I, yeah, I need to look yeah. that up. Over yeah, the last when 50 when years. this at least fifty years, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I would guess. And um, then I'm sure it was really basic. It was basically like our vending machine toys in the beginning, right? Right. Yeah. And then someone got creative and went, right, you know right. what? What if we just blew people's minds? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. eBay. eBay is a really good place to look for that. that is, there's a yes. lot of international shipping too. Have you seen the uh, the Tremors set? They just Bondi just no, did. Oh no! They did all Ooh, those really? little stages of the graboids in really. Yeah. I, I can send you the link. Yeah, just go yes. to eBay, type in Graboid Gash Upon. Wow. Great. Yeah, there you go. All, all the forms cool. are there. So, yeah, check there it out. Go. go to eBay. That's your and place. One thing I didn't realize, too, is that Gash Upon is actually a registered trademark of Bondi. Oh, oh really? wow. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So, wow. you know, they got in early. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But, yeah, cool. get some cool. get some Gash Upon. Your friends will thank you. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's cool. I like it. Yeah. Nice. Um, got another one here for you guys. Um, right. anyone's familiar with Mezco? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember this year, they put out a whole lineup of, uh, destroy all monsters. Yes. Yeah. They're like Usually, little yeah. four or five inch, but they're yeah, really, like five really inches, well right? done. They oh, are. They're really good. Yeah. They're yeah. like, they're like Bondi kind of figures back in the day, but like yeah, slightly so. smaller, but really, but the, I love that they're all together. Really sets. surprising. the quality and, they, of and, and they have like, they're sort of dioramas too. Kind of, yeah. yeah. They, they give you enough stuff to really set them up that way. So they yeah. did yeah. two sets earlier this year to finish the whole Destroy All Monsters lineup. They just released a Hetera set with like mm, all the nice. stages of Hetera, Godzilla, some laser that's beams, and awesome. factory buildings to set it up with. You that's know. so cool. So it's that beautiful. one just came out. I think you could find that one, you know, for about forty bucks. And then they also just announced the Mecha Godzilla set with. King Caesar, Mecha Godzilla, and the Godzilla for that too. So wow. they nice. are a train that can't stop right now. So get yeah. in on it now. Uh, and they're cool because they... they're they're like they're movie yeah. accurate to the to the incarnations of Godzilla too. Like they are. Done, they're getting they're all the really, nuances yeah. of the, each suit. Yeah. So it's yeah. really impressive. So if you guys, if anyone likes Godzilla and wants, you know, isn't a diehard fan. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe you might have heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. Yeah. These aren't sure. like high-end really big figures either they you could put yeah. them on a desk they're kind of yep. like the perfect little tchotchke size yeah. too so yeah check them out they look great so my question is are the stages of hetera the same as the stages of grief <laughs> five <laughs> stages that. of hetera yes yeah <laughs> No, the, the last, okay. the last, the last one being uh, acceptance turned radioactive. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> I guess, I guess when you've had your header right ripped from you, your header right, <laughs> yeah, from yeah, your head. that's, that's your, yeah. uh, that's acceptance. That's the final yeah. stage. He, he yeah. does revert back and forth a few times, so yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, uh, nice. So yeah, Mezco, like Great. it. All right. There you go. All right, Larry. Well, you know, I I brought up some clothing. I brought up some toys. What do you say we drink something to go along with this, huh? Let's have mm. a drink. Ooh, yeah. Yes, yes. And if there's anything I love, it's a nice bottle of wine. 
a nice bottle of wine from Vampire <laughs> Vineyards. <laughs> Vampire <laughs> it's, the, it's it's the Larry Strode infomercial. Oh. See, 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 and Larry has are... no connection to them at all. <laughs> now, look, guys, this is the uh, if you guys type in Vampire Vineyards, you look and you go, "Hey, your I face get a comes gift, up." You know, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, guys, I have nothing to do with this. Okay. It's just, it's really cool. These, this is award winning wines. But the thing I love what about award? it is, uh, like, name the, the best award. Cabaret. <laughs> like, uh, there are these wine uh, awards. The wine the awards. Okay. <laughs> All right. Keep going. The best Merlot. Why are you, why do you give me shit when I'm trying to do this thing? <laughs> I don't give you shit. Jeez. <laughs> Let's no, pick I a lot hey, of talks wine about and wine. I, and I Merry love- Christmas to you, too. <laughs> Jesus. I love your wines. Go ahead. And, and I love the wine awards. I go every year. Yes, yes. Do you? Well, this is the thing that I love about the wines. People go, oh, what is this? Oh, red wine. What guys, it, if you order this, the bottles of wine come with a little vampire cape. How cool is that? Aww. That is cool. Yeah. And and you guys, what's great about the holidays, you guys can order gift packs. They have like there's like uh, you can order for 60 bucks, like a holiday gift box includes the vampire Cabernet with the cape, gourmet gummies, vampire gourmet coffee and a Dracula's daughter tea. Or you can get check this out. Dracula's sparkling rosé. It's a three pack. It, it looks like you're drinking bubbly blood. How cool is that? That is cool. anyway, <laughs> it's it's really delicious wine. And the thing that I, I love having my bottle on the counter with the little vampire cape, it totally goes with my decor. So um, I would suggest checking it out. Vampire Vineyards, great for the holidays. They have all kinds of package deals that you could order these and they'd send it to you. So what about the gummies? I want to know more about the gummies. They're vampire gummies. And so are oh. they just like your regular kind of gummies or are they wine yeah. flavor? No, no, or... no, no, no. They're, they're regular, like uh, they're vampire gummies. And are they're, they bats or something? Like what, what's the, what's the deal? <laughs> they're just <laughs> chewy, delicious gummies that are little shapes. <laughs> they're t- <just laughs> tiny hemoglobins. Yeah. They're hemoglobin <laughs> shaped. Right. But look, uh, I, I'm a big fan of the wine. So that's what I've got. I, and I'm just recommending this because Everyone loves to have wine for the holidays. And this way well, you can true. have a vampire <clears throat> bottle of wine to go with whatever meal you're serving at the holidays. Okay. So there you go. I like Check that. it out. Very nice. I love cool. it. Vampire cool. Vineyards. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, well, speaking of uh, NECA, this is an action figure, which they just put out. I think they believe they put it out through Shout Factory, a limited edition figure. I never thought I'd see this figure, but it's great, and uh, I would love to have it. Uh, it's the first officially licensed Adrian Barbeau figure from The Fog. Ooh. No. Wow. Her, her character, Stevie Wayne, uh, wow. is in her, in her, just in her jeans and her nicely tight red sweater. <laughs> <laughs> and uh it's it's a very good like likeness of her oh. this is like you know neca size you know like migo size but it's, it's neca it looks great and it's it's uh through i believe it's limited edition through shout factory uh so you get because you know they put out previously they put out blake the uh that's right yeah ghost so this can go with, your, with with yeah which is fantastic so now you have uh stevie wayne to go uh with your blake fog figure it looks and, pretty uh, good it's great yeah, it looks great. Um, I mean, you know, if you can't get Adrian Barbeau herself, this is the next best thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Is it? Uh, <laughs> well, maybe not. But uh, but yeah, but for, for the for the fog completist, uh, you know, right. I think yes. uh, it's great. I mean, you know, it's great. They should put out more more characters from the movie. Maybe they should do the lighthouse uh, playset. Yeah, totally. So, so there you go, sure. NECA Stevie Wayne action figure. You guys remember like when that. we met? You guys remember when we met her at Monster Palooza? Oh yeah, she loved yes. us. She loved that was, yes. Well, you know, maybe I was a little pushy about, hey, get on our no. podcast. But it was, it was, <laughs> it was great to meet her, and she looked fantastic. And, yes, uh, yes. And and actually, you know, if you could go to Patreon, you can check out a little clip of that too. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Right. So and I think I think we even told her, you know, there has to be a figure of you. And That's right. Like, oh yeah, the fun. yeah. And now six years later, well, yes, there you go. Yeah, monster nice. party making things happen. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> nice, one, um, James. 
Well, Sean, I think you mentioned the Batman 66 figures, and I was yes. uh, pleasant, pleasantly surprised to see McFarland has come out with an Eartha Ooh. Kit Catwoman. Oh, yeah. Figure. Ooh, that's nice. And, and I was talking to the vendor that I that I bought it from, and he told me that they're also coming out with a King Tut. Oh, and see that? That's and nice. a, yeah. a Mr. Freeze. All right. How about, yeah, uh, egg, how about, how yeah. about Egghead? I don't have news on Egghead. I'm hoping okay. that they do, that they move on to like all the, yeah, Bookworm would be awesome. The Archer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sammy uh, Davis then, Jr.? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they should do all the cameos with their. Yeah, yeah. that would be great. And yes. Right. They're doing a, a villain's play set, the villain's hideout play set mm. uh, with the chairs and the little surroundings and everything. Yeah, I was very excited about that. And, you know, McFarland, uh, their other DC figures line are, are a different scale. They're a little bit bigger. But, I mean, I mean they get esoteric. There's all these different variations on the Superman characters and, and right, the right. villains. They did a great series uh, for The Dark Knight Returns where you can you can build a figure, you can uh, build a horse. If you collect all four figures, you can b- build a stallion that Batman rides on. And that's beautiful. And these are all affordable. But I would single out the Swamp Thing figure, which is a larger scale as oh, Swamp, wow. Thing, Swamp Thing would be. And yeah. this figure is almost 12 inches. And it nice. retails, you can probably get it for like 30 or 40 bucks. Wow. And it is, to me, this is like the definitive Swamp Thing creature. The detail is amazing. That's great. Uh, it's got articulation and it's just it's just gorgeous. So kudos to McFarland for, for doing some of this stuff. It's uh, really, I've never bought one of these figures that I regretted having. So yeah, yeah. cool. Very cool. good. Matt? Okay. Well, this is something that... When I think about doing this, I think of Larry because <laughs> yes, I do. Because what I am suggesting that you do is what if you gave someone something from your collection? Ooh. What if you, instead of going to the store or uh, going online or wherever you go to buy your things, you know, you go into your bins that you've got in the attic or in the basement or wherever they are, and you dig around because you know that there's stuff in there that maybe you're not all that. I mean, you like it, but maybe you're not, you know, as in love with it as you were when you first bought it. And you know that there is somebody who would love this thing. Yes. And so I would say, go in your collection, check out what you got. And and when I say give something from your collection, you know, don't don't give them something crappy. Don't, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, the, the, like, Jar Jar, the Jar Jar Binks figure. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like don't 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 re-gift a shitty present. Just <laughs> give give that one to charity. You know, the the Cheers Pez dispensers or whatever. You know, just, like, <laughs> just don't just give those away. But when it comes to your friends or someone that you really care about, go dig a little deep. Maybe maybe give something that you like and you know is quality. And, you know, I, I think of Larry because Larry has given me these presents. Like he gave me this beautiful die-cast metal common rider figure yes. that right. is mint in the box yes. and it's beautiful and yes. You know, I'm telling you, and I mean this with all sincerity, Larry and I kid each other, but these are the type of presents that I will never get rid of. And I mean that, like they mean so much to me. The fact that Larry, who prides himself on his collection and and yeah. likes to hold on to his stuff, uh, that's true. will dig, dig in there and give me something like this as a present. I mean, mm. that makes all the difference in the world. And so, yeah. yeah, I mean, I have my favorite pieces in my collection, but those those pieces that he gave me occupy a very special place in my heart. And so yeah. try to do cool. it. I, I, it might be a little hard. Maybe, you know, Not maybe there's bad. something in there that like you, you're still kind of attached to. But yeah. I'm sure the feeling whenever I have done this, when I have given something away that I know this other person is really going to love. It just makes me feel so good. It's, you know, it's the spirit of giving. And also by doing this, you know that that thing is going to a good home. You're not just selling it on eBay. Right. Right. Giving it to someone who will appreciate it. 
You know, Matt, I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because it, it is true. You know, we, we are collectors and we have a lot of stuff. Matt, I remember getting that figure back in 1989 when I went to Japan for the first time. And I was I was going crazy. I was picking up stuff and I and I saw this thing and I didn't know who it was. I didn't know who the character was, but I bought it and I was thrilled to have it. You know, but I got my Ultraman stuff like that. And I, I did. I had him for years and years and years. And of course, I, I met you and, and you know, we became friends. And Matt, I'll, I'll never forget when I thought to myself, you know, Matt loves Common Rider so much and he doesn't have this in his collection. And I, I felt like it should be in your collection. And it and it made me feel so happy to give that I'm to glad. you because, because I, you know, I didn't know Common Rider like you. Yeah, you've introduced <laughs> it to me and I, I like it and stuff, but – the fact that it's in your collection makes me so happy. And I think that's great advice, Matt, for any of you guys out there who have bigger collections. If you have something that, you know, you know, maybe someone else would love it, maybe a little more than you. Can you imagine giving that to someone and just seeing the joy in their face, you know, and it and it's cool. It's like I can see it at your place, too. You know, exactly. I, I, right, and, right, and, yeah. and, you know, and it just makes me happy. To see yeah. that there, and and I'm glad, Matt, that you've enjoyed it as much as you have. I really it, it means the world to me, and it's the type of thing that you should pass on. You know, and we're not talking everybody because some people don't have the collections that we do. Don't have all this stuff that's just abundance of collectibles. So a lot of people don't have the foolhardiness that we do <laughs> to buy everything. <laughs> the yeah. obsession, right? Yeah, the sickness that we all suffer from, you but know, in a delightful way. You know, Matt, that reminds me, though, Matt, because something that there is still a, an item I have in my collection that you got me that I still cherish and I have on my shelf proudly. In fact, this I don't think you just bought it for me. I think you made it for me or that Ooh. is you built it and painted it for me. And that was a little I think it's about a five inch kind of little model kit or maybe a garage kit of the Brainiac. Oh yeah, uh, the, yeah. the Mexican, yes. the Mexican, the Baron of Terror, the Mexican right, right. horror film with the, yeah. the brain, the sex of brains. But, but it's on like it's just a little, it's a little like model. But it's you painted it and put it together it either for Christmas or my birthday years and years ago. And I love that because I don't have any other Brainiac toys or figures. <laughs> Which, by the get. way, right? Where, where's that? Yeah, yeah, right. I think mm. there, yeah, I think there's like a vinyl figure somewhere out there, but super hard to get. But but that little figure is perfect. And it's beautifully painted. So yeah, I I love that figure. Well, thank you, Sean. And again, yeah, we awesome. we've all we've all done this to a certain extent. Uh, yes. All of us. I James yes. has given me great stuff too, and yeah, um, you've given me something likewise. too. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. And and so those things that are special to that person as well, and, right. and you're getting it from them where you know that they like this too, just makes it all the more special. Right. That's yeah. true. Well, you know, this is really lovely. And, and I know that we could go on and on. Yes, oh, we yeah. could. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I'm sure we've given our listeners a lot of ideas. And Matt, that's a lovely idea to end on. But what, but what do you say we just do a lightning round? Sure. What do you say we just Sounds do a good. couple Sounds little good. things out yeah. there? Just lightning round. Flip them out. I got a few yeah. more. Okay. All right. Yeah. Kevin, why don't you give us a couple? Lightning round. Sure. 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 Lightning round. Uh, here's one for Matt. Uh, the okay. Junji Ito collection <gasps> coloring book. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yes, please. So uh, after you color it, you can do what you said. Just give them to your friends, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you color uh, it one. and then let it yeah. haunt your nightmares. Let it haunt, yeah, let it haunt them instead of you now. So <laughs> you can do that. Uh, I also have the Lord of the Rings collection and the Silmarillion Illustrated uh, by Harper Collins. Um, so these are new editions of Lord of the Rings and Silmarillion that have been in they included some illustrations that Tolkien did. Wow. So they're oh, more wow. true to how he would have wanted them published, ah. how they actually came about. So I have one of the editions, The Lord of the Rings. It's great. Uh, it's about a thousand pages, but it make a great <laughs> gift. It'd probably take you about a year to read, but it's <laughs> right. worth it. <laughs> um, and then my last lightning round thing is uh, anything from NECA. Uh, their Universal Monsters lines yes. are kicking ass. Yeah. Right uh, pretty uh, cool. So they announced a Gilman for next year. They did oh, Family really? Opera Tease, the Cheney one. I love the glow uh, ones. The glow ones are great. Those ones yeah. I, I found out at Target a couple times too. So good retro feel. But yeah, get yeah. your NECAs. So Plus yeah. The accessory sets. For yes, and that's what makes money, them the kind Frankenstein of Frankenstein yeah, one yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. so that's yeah, cool. That's my Very lightning nice. round. There you go. Yeah. Nice. You, know, you Kevin, always I'm deliver. 
Yes, Kevin, mm. I'm just going to follow up on that note because you just said something. I was going to bring up the NECA Universal Monsters, but specifically – Back in 1980, there was the Remco line of Universal Monsters, and they were like oh, three yeah. to three half inches high. Well, so NECA's has come out with the slightly larger. They're like eight and a half inches high. Mm-hmm. And the card, the card back is exactly like the uh, Remco line from the 1980s. Yeah. Oh, and cool. it's got the glow look. And what Kevin had mentioned, he mentioned Target. What I hate is when people take a new toy, put it on eBay, and charge $60 for it. And I'm yeah. seeing this right now. Really? So, listeners, if you're interested, go to a couple Targets. You can find the mummy, the wolfman, and, and Frankenstein. But they're like 24 bucks. It's probably the cheapest you're going to be able to find it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I love these figures. I got to get two of each because I'm going to keep one in the package and one to take out to put next <laughs> to my smaller Remco ones. But, yeah, <laughs> Kevin, that's a great, that's a great yeah. one. They've captured uh, also, the likeness on everybody. Oh, continue. They, they know they really, really have. Also, guys, I I mentioned Super Seven. At Super Seven, they created a series of what I'd like to call them as Ben Cooper Halloween masks. Masks yeah. of, yeah. of oh, Godzilla. Yeah. They did Godzilla, Hedora, and they did a Mecha Godzilla. And the box is great that they yes. come in. It looks like something mm-hmm. from Ben Cooper. There's no actual costume. It's really just the mask. But the masks are just terrific. They're just they're they really are. cool. I, I didn't think like at first I thought, well, yeah, just like a they're, I mean, they're made to be like they're from the seventies, you know, like they're, yeah, but, but they're, but they're the, cool. They're really the presentation cool. that makes yeah, it too. You, know? you, know, you yeah. don't even want to move it out of the box. No, so. no, yeah, but, yeah. but look, look, if you take it out of the box and you want to wear it, the masks are just terrific. They're, they are the plastic masks that you wish Ben Cooper made. Back <laughs> yeah, in yeah, exactly. Back in the 80s. Yeah. And, exactly. uh, and and look, they're very reasonable, but they're not going to last forever. But these are great, inexpensive items that you can get the the monster lover in your in your life. The last thing, guys, I wanted to bring up, and maybe it's a little somber one, and I talked about this last year. We all remember William Castle, who produced The Tingler, A House on Haunted Hill, and Rosemary's Baby. Of course. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, William Castle had a couple of daughters. One of them was Terry. And Terry had a, a lovely son named Will, and he was a very lively, helpful, loving kid. Well, he passed away at the age of 17 from cancer. Mm, and oh. what the family has done, the Castle family has done, is to, to keep Will's helpful, loving spirit alive. They created this organization called Finding Will to keep his memory alive, and it creates a series of beautiful candles. These aren't monster-related. But they're lovely candles. You know, if you want to get your mom or like your girlfriend or your sister or something, uh, rose and gardena or like mint. And they're lovely, lovely candles. Uh, They're about like 20, 25 bucks. They also have other things. But if you go to findingwill.com, you can check it out. And guys, all of the proceeds, and I mean all of it, 100% of the profits go to City of Hope the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center, the National Institute for Health. And it's everything goes to find a cure for childhood cancer. And it's all in the name of Will Castle. And so I strongly suggest you check it out because you can get a great smelling candle and it helps go towards cancer research. That's great. That's beautiful. Very cool. good. Very Very nice. Very good. There we go. All right, Uh, John. Okay. So I have a few here for you. VCI, the Blu-ray company, put out a great eight movie set of Santo films. Yes. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Great. And, and these are all, these are all English dubbed. So the English friendly, because so, sometimes I like to have the original, mm-hmm. you know, original language version with the subtitles, but sometimes, you know, you want to go back to those days of watching a late night TV when it was dubbed, you know, sure. and it's great. And these are great for that. There's, there's eight films, including Santo and the wax museum, Santo in the Vengeance of the Mummy, Santo versus Frankenstein's Daughter, and others. Uh, they all look great on Blu-ray. Uh, there's introductions to each movie by uh, Mexican cinema historian David Wilt. There's a little history of Santo featurette, and it's it's great. It's kind of like a great starter pack for uh, if you want to get into Santo films. Really cool. Um, some other toys. This guy I discovered at um, the last Monster Palooza. Actually, this guy's name is Justin Ishmael. That's, oh, I know I, Justin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah, I know that guy. I, he, uh, yeah. If you look him at justinishmael.com, it's I S H M A E L. Uh, he puts he makes these vinyl toys, very exclusive. But the coolest ones, the, the, this is what I picked up at Monster Palooza, but he has on his, his site too, is a dead on screen accurate, like nine inches tall figure of the Deadly Spawn. 
Yes, I have it. Beautiful. It It is great. It's great. You also have little larvae you can get separately or with it. And it it is just, and he has other cool stuff on his site, but, and this, this is actually officially licensed too, from the makers of the film too. And it's, it's great. I mean, there's, I've never seen a really, a really great deadly spawn vinyl toy until I saw this. It's really great. And then I'd also have to say that uh, trick or treat studios, put out for christmas these awesome halloween free silver shamrock ornaments <laughs> uh, it's it's nice nice kind of painted resin resin heavy uh, ornaments of the three masks the witch the skull and the pumpkin head and they're great they look awesome they're on our tree right now get them well, there you go those are mine nice um i'm gonna rattle off some books here all right. Uh, company called 1984 Publishing uh, put out a coffee table book called Blood on Black Wax, which is uh, all about horror soundtracks with oh, reproductions wow. of the covers and um, alternate covers. And it's really it's really beautiful for any soundtrack collector. Is uh, it like another, certain era, James, or is it just kind of? Well, it's mostly I mean, it's vinyl. So it's mostly 70s and 80s. Huh, uh, that's heavy, cool. heavy on the 70s. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and it's beautiful. There's a series of three books. There are two called Ad Nauseum that are. I, I have that one. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Oh my these God. Are, these are reproductions of newspaper ads of movies showing in theaters and drive ins. Oh, cool. And um, it's, it's always been like my favorite feature in Scary Monsters magazine when they would reprint yeah. those. And yeah. these are books that are collecting these. One is 70s and 80s. One is 80s, and there's a new one called Ad Astra, which is just science fiction ads. Oh, wow. Uh, so, nice. so these are beautiful, and they're really fun to look through. Uh, Tuttle Publishing, Tuttle, that does a series of travel books about Japan and Japanese culture. Now, they did a book a couple of years ago that I was really excited by, and I think I gave all of you guys uh, a copy as a gift. Probably. Uh, to- oh, Yeah. To- Tokyo Geeks Guide, yes, which is, great. Which, is a, which is a shopping guide if you're visiting Tokyo, the neighborhoods and the shops to go to, complete with maps. Mm-hmm. And I've also recommended it to some listeners. Well, uh, recently, the same author, Gianni Simone, put out Otaku Japan, which is, okay, ah. it, you're not just going to Tokyo, but you're visiting maybe Hiro- Hiroshima, Nagoya, Sapporo, you know, all these different parts of Japan. Well, you can find toy stores in all those different towns, too. Wow. And, and it includes Tokyo. So this is called Otaku Japan. Heartily, heartily recommend it. Nice. So, uh, yeah. So those are mine. Nice. All right. Good picks. Nice. Very nice. nice. Matt? All right, Matt. Well, the first thing I want to suggest is something that's a, a large category, and that is buy something glow in the dark. Get somebody something <laughs> that glows in the dark. It doesn't yeah. matter what. Just make sure it glows in the dark. Because yeah. glow glow in the dark stuff is fun, right? It is. It's just yeah. awesome. Oh, it's yeah. automatically cool. Every, it is. Yeah. And, and it's, you know what's great is, is that most of the time people will buy a figure that's not glow in the dark, let's say, of, you know, Amigo figure or some vinyl figure. Right. And they don't get the glow one. But if you yeah. then get them the glow one, they'll love it. Yeah. Because, <laughs> right, right. Because what's what I love about glow in the dark things, it's like getting something extra for your money. You, yes. you, mm. yeah, yeah. You get a feature. Yeah. And there's so many ways you can display something that's glow in the dark. I have a glow in the dark, a couple glow in the dark shelves that I illuminate yes. with the black light. They look awesome. And it looks great. But you can also just charge them up and let them glow at night and they look cool. And mm-hmm. my glow in the dark stuff, some of my my favorite collectibles. And so yeah, that's yeah. something everybody likes glow in the dark. Find something glow in the dark and give it to somebody. <laughs> and then I would also like to recommend. Now, this is something that I believe is a great thing that has been overlooked. And that is if you're a Star Trek fan like me, Playmates did a series of toys in the 1990s and they did all kinds of figures. They did figures yeah, of yeah. almost every character, every, from obscure, the sh- every yeah. obscure character from the shows and movies. And they yep. did them in all different forms. They did little uh, small ones, little all plastic ones. They did mm. um, nine inch figures. They did these 12 inch figures. Uh, they did play sets and they're so good. And I don't understand why people, don't like them. Maybe they made too many of them. I don't know. 
are, but Matt, are they hard to get now? Or are they good for not. Money? That's what I'm saying is that mm. if you huh. go online, if you go onto eBay and you look up some of these figures, especially like these nine inch figures that they did, they did a special right. run of mirror, mirror figures. And as right. much as I love Mego, these figures are vastly superior to the Mego right. ones that just recently came out. Mm-hmm. Just the, the likenesses, the clothing, everything. They did a 12 inch series that was one of the few action figure series of Star Trek that I've ever seen that had velour uniforms. Mm. Velour uniforms. Right. Come on. And <laughs> a lot of these figures you can get for under $10 even. It's really interesting. Like you wonder, like eventually, it's some, so suddenly, you know, at some point those will be going for lots of money. Like you can never tell, you know. Like it's just, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I, I know that Star Trek is kind of peaked when it comes to collectibles right now. Yeah, and yeah, I, and then no, on no top change, of it, though. I also think that some of these things, maybe they made a whole bunch of them. And so yeah, they're maybe, just yeah. too easy to find. But right. forget about that. If you want to, if you love Star Trek and you want yeah, yeah. a really wonderful set of figures, go and, <clears throat> and check this stuff out. I mean, I have, you guys have all seen it, the Playmates Transporter set from the next generation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can get this thing for under 10 bucks. You put some batteries in it and it there's this special effect that really looks like your figure is being transported. Right, yeah, you guys oh, have all right. seen it work, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it's great. And so, but like, like, like you said, they put out so many obscure, like, like you can get every red shirt character, every, every, <laughs> no, every, every disposable red shirt. Uh, <laughs> and, and I would character. say some of them, <laughs> like, I, I wish they would have talked to me first before they released them. It's like, really, you don't, <laughs> you don't need to release this one. You know, there's only so many Edith Keelers that you know the kids are going to play with. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I don't know. But, but they're. I mean, I'm telling you, for the quality and for the just the, they. I mean, they did ships. Uh, one yeah, of my yeah. favorite things that they put out was from uh, the Tholian web. They did the full set of figures wearing those, um, the spacesuits. Oh yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. And, and yeah. they're beautiful. And so that's one that, I mean, yeah, you, you won't spend a lot of money and you're giving something of quality. Yeah. And that's cool. And then I just want to just throw out a couple books because I was just in Europe and uh, I went to Forbidden Planet and I picked up two books that I, I'm sure some of our fans know of these books, but I did not know of them. And they're older books. But one of them that I thought to stay on with the Star Trek theme is there's a book called Star Trek, The Costumes, Five Decades of Fashion from the Final oh. Frontier, 2015, oh. Paula M. Block and Terry J. Erdman. <clears throat> And it's with an introduction by Robert Justman. And this one is published by Titan Books of England. And it's this huge coffee table book. And it's all the costumes, original costumes. So it's photos of everything and then design artwork. And so we're not talking about just, you know, the uniforms. We're talking about every hot lady in the original (laughs) series. Uh, Every (laughs) one of those outfits is Uh. there. That's right. awesome, and that and then awesome. and then they you, they have you know shots of the actresses wearing them, of course, but it's great, and it goes from the original series through the reboot movies. Okay, right, right, and so it, it stops right before Discovery. Thank God. So, <laughs> so that was one, and then the other one that I got was a really great book called Aliens: The Set Photography. Behind the scenes of James Cameron's Uh 1986 masterpiece, 2016 by Simon Ward, again, Titan Books. And this is just exactly what you think it is. It's just all these wonderful behind the scenes photos. And it's a a nice big coffee table book. Both these books, by the way, if you go online, you're not going to pay too much for them. You know, you can get them both. (laughs) Each one you can get for about 15 bucks each. So wow, you know, save yeah. a little money and you know, it's, you got to give these things to the people who appreciate them. I know that when it comes to Star Trek fans, they come and go, <laughs> but if you're <laughs> hardcore, like me, all these suggestions, I think will please, because if I got any of these things, even if it was doubles, like, you know, with Larry talking about getting two of something, I'd be, I'd be so happy. Like, yeah, right. give me that one. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's cool. Wow. So there you go. Oh, that's great. Right. That's awesome. Fun. Well, guys, I also wanted to mention, as we have already in the past, we have two uh, Mill Creek Blu-ray sets coming out in which we have 
commentaries by yes, Monster Party. Mm. And uh, yeah. these are these are the one set, the one horror set is called Thrillers from the Vault, eight classic horror films. And we do the commentary for the Boris Karloff and Peter Lorre film, The Boogeyman Will Get You. And also for the sci-fi from the vault for classic film set, we do the commentary for the Lou Costello solo film, The 30-Foot Bride of Candy Rock. Oh, Two boy. classics and, of the genre. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Now we had now we had mentioned gift. That, yes. Now we had mentioned, <laughs> I think, in a previous show that these are coming out in December, but these actually have been pushed back a bit. So these are now coming Aww. out in in February, they're actually coming out on February 14th, 2023. Okay. Uh, so oh. it can be a Valentine's gift now instead of a Christmas gift. But, <laughs> right. but that, that shouldn't stop you from ordering them now because you can do that right yeah. now on Amazon. So, so, so uh, order them for Valentine's. And I'm telling you, if, if that doesn't close the deal, <laughs> yeah. if right. either of those sets, if you go, yes. hey, you know, I, you know, we could hang out here at the bar, but, you know, I've got these <laughs> Mill Creek sets. Around. Yes. Uh, give, uh, give maybe you'd like to watch uh, the, the Boogeyman Will Get You. And yeah. maybe I'll get you. <laughs> I'm just uh, so so. Yeah, hey, came off 30, creepy. 30, I'm sorry. 30, Thirty foot bride of Candy Rock. That's kind of like a bride, you know. That's kind of like romantic, yeah, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so so give the gift of Monster Party and get those uh, Blu-ray sets. You won't <laughs> yes. be disappointed. No. That, that's great, great for Sean, Arbor Day that's... too. If you're too late yeah. on Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, guys, Cinco de Mayo is really a great <laughs> present. Because... Groundhog Day, it's a perfect <laughs> gift. Well, you know, it doesn't matter, Sean, what day you get them. Just if you order them, and it'll that's make right. a great gift anytime. But that's right. This is this has been another stellar holiday it, gift guide. Yes, oh, yes. I, have, I have my yes. list of Wonderful. great stuff to spend and money on the, again. I gotta say, these are like my favorite episodes every year. I love doing them. Oh. Yeah. yeah. These are good. These are fun. I love doing I mean, this with you guys. It's great because you bring up – everyone brings up things that I, I didn't think about or, or yeah, something I wasn't yeah. sure. But, but you know, I, I got to hand it to Matt. Matt, the idea about looking at your own collection and, and maybe mm-hmm. giving a piece that – Maybe mm-hmm. you didn't weren't so thrilled with or weren't so happy and give it to someone who could really enjoy it. That, <laughs> yes. that, that is just wonderful. Really. No, no, is. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, it'll, it'll make you meaning, feel good. The, the true meaning of the holiday. True. Yeah. True. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for being with us. Thank As you, always. Guys. Yes, thank yeah, you. Yeah, and yeah, happy holidays, always. everybody. Well, yeah, and, and Kevin, I, look, I, I know that you, you're you're doing some freelancing with some of these uh, toy you're, companies. You're, you're wheeling anything? and dealing. What's going on? Is there, anything, dealing, yeah. is there anything you can tell us? Uh, yeah, what you're working on. on. Maybe more of those Toho monsters coming down the line from uh, Spiral. Uh, just uh, look on the cool. horizon for that. Yeah. And other than yeah. that, I'm working more for hop toys again uh cool more stuff from them a lot of the other stuff i can't talk about unfortunately though okay but, you know, okay tell those guys i love them tell those guys i love them kevin i will i will do you like, uh, you, what they do you like work too. at uh do you like work at area 51 or something it feels <laughs> like that sometimes i just got all this info i want to let out you know, and i can't you know I, it's great. you know i don't know about you guys but don't you feel like you know kevin is moving up in the toy world man one day he may be running mattel or has that's right oh, that's and true. at that right time the I, at the time i'm gonna suggest monster party action figures you know, right. I, yeah. I can't yeah. sculpt those for you now too right hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Yeah. maybe next year hey, I, I can't I, do. i'll leave a spot under my tree I'll, that's right I, I'm just saying, I can do well, it right next to my invasion of the body snatchers <laughs> <laughs> <Thank> you, <Tommy. laughs> well kevin thanks again for joining us of on course. Yes. thank Thanks you for having me as always, always so. just raise our glasses yes. 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 gift giving and kevin hey yes. cheers yes. happy holidays, holidays. Happy holidays. holidays. <laughs> <laughs> time for a listener shout out shout out shout out shout out shout shout it out shout 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 it out this goes out to Ed Stastny from Portland, Oregon. Yeah, right. hey, Ed. who's the proud owner of a Monster Party T-shirt. Yes. Nice. Purchased from our eBay store, uh, Monster Party store. Ed, we appreciate your representing. We appreciate your support, yes, and we, um, we hope you enjoy that shirt and uh, wear it around the holidays. Wear yes. it everywhere. Yes, yes. <laughs> wear it. Wear it and save Christmas. 
Stitch it to your flesh. <laughs> also, a, a quick shout out to our longtime listener and friend, Adam G. Holtz from New Hampshire. Yeah, Adam, Adam. G. Holtz. Who, uh, who retweeted an announcement from a company called Titanic Creations that they mm. are going to be releasing in 2023 a Gorgo figure. Ooh. No way. A nice. vinyl Gorgo figure, which I'm very excited about. It comes with the baby. Um, oh, don't oh. I don't know what the scale is going to be, but it's something to look out for for next Gorgo's year. Gorgo is sure. a great, great monster, great, yes. great designed monster. Makes yeah. a great figure. Cool. Yeah. So thanks for turning us on to that. Adam. Yeah. Nice. Larry, Larry, you got Oh, him? yes. Look, I want to give a big shout out to Josh Gilliland and the Legal Geeks. Yeah. Right. Just, just to let everyone know, back at Comic-Con of 2022, Josh and his team, they did a Jaws mock trial. And right. we filmed it. Thank you very much, James Gonis. Thank you very hey. much, Kathy, my lovely daughter. And we, we filmed this with uh, four cameras. We edited something together, and it is on their YouTube page. Nice. Uh, and you can check it out. It's it's less than an hour. It's a lot of fun. If you go to YouTube and just type in the Legal Geeks Jaws Trial, it'll take you right there. Cool. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, Josh is the moderator. But look, they have a real judge, and they have these real attorneys. It's like Mrs. Kittner. She's suing the town for the death <laughs> of her son. Uh, and, but it, it's great. It's great. Everyone Fantastic. was wonderful. And I, so I suggest check it out. It's a nice 57-minute thing with uh, all kinds of neat legal stuff. So jo- loads jo- of fun. Josh Gilliland really is – he is uh, a special light in our life, I think. I, yeah. I, this is, the yeah. world is a better place with Josh Gilliland in it. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes indeed. Yeah, True. Exactly. But it also gives you an idea of like some of the podcasts that they do and some yeah. of the other things they do. But this is neat because it's visual. So check it out. The Legal Geeks, Jaws, The Trial. Cool. 22. All right. You know, the guy playing uh, the mayor in the um, mock trial, he was wearing a wig. And yes. I was looking for a wig just like that for my jor cosplay. So I, I went up to him. It's like, where did you find that wig? And he said, I borrowed it from Dana Gould. <laughs> <laughs> he, Dana is the go-to guy for wigs. I have no idea. It's, it really is. No it's, it's, it's one of the things that people don't realize in the industry. But all no the idea. good wigs come from Dana. I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. Nice. And guys, you know what else makes a great Christmas gift? What? Monster Party merch. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. What what more kind and heartfelt and considerate gift could you give to someone than a Monster Party t-shirt, a mm-hmm. Monster Party cap, a Monster Party PPE mask, a Monster Party shot glass? And all of these things are available on our eBay store, which is Monster Party Store. Easy to remember. And if you happen to be a Patreon member, we will throw in free goodies courtesy of another toy maker, Jason Lindsay and Biff Bang uh-huh. Toys. That's right. And creature creator extraordinaire, Ted Haynes. Ted That's right. Haynes. I, I like to think of them as two of Santa's elves. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Favorite elves. Can I just say something about the PPE mask? Yeah, sure. This thing is needed. I have found out. <laughs> and, and Larry has as well. Because yes, yes, not long ago, yes. this this month, we got COVID. <laughs> and oh. I'm not saying that if I was wearing the mask, I would not have gotten COVID. But it certainly would have helped, I'm guessing. Hmm. Right. Oh, no. I, I was nowhere near Matt. I just want to say for the record. That's where true. I got it. Yeah, got that's right. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I got it in Glasgow. Well, Right. But but at least I didn't have to end up in the hospital, okay? Because no, yeah, and, yeah. I've been vaccinated. So. No, and yes. me neither. And I'm feeling much better. I know Larry's feeling better. But uh, yeah, that shit is still out there. So, oh, yeah. you know, if mm. you got your regular mask and you want to add another layer, hey, the Monster Party mask is, is perfect for you. Mm. Yes, right. agreed. Well, I mentioned Patreon. And, you know, I know that you told me before, I, I, I got deja vu, but what the hell, what, I keep forgetting, what can you tell me about this Patreon thing? What's this all about? Well, let me just put it in this way, because the holidays are upon us. And so when Santa 
was coming up with all the wonderful things that he could give to the children. There was a point where he ran out of ideas. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> he thought, Patreon, that's the thing. That'll bring back the joy of Christmas. And so Patreon is this wonderful it's, it's like a candy cane wonderland where you will have access, if you join Patreon, to exclusive Monster Party material. Now, we're talking bonus audio episodes, bonus Monster Party TV shows, like Monster Party Masterpieces and Larry's Toy Time. And these are just great shows, and they're bonuses. They're something that you cannot get unless you are a Patreon member. And right. we have more things, too. I mean, we we had this whole long-running series of video diaries of our trip to Japan. That's still out there. My stepfather-in-law presents these wonderful sets of these vintage science fiction stories that you can peruse. And it's just, you, we have so many things. And so it, um, imagine them all gathered all around the Christmas tree, just presents <laughs> waiting for you to open them. <laughs> oh, Matt, you know, it, it sounds wonderful, but I, I think I'm on the naughty list because I've spent <laughs> so much money on distinctive dummies that I'm pretty broke right now. <laughs> How dare you? How I, dare I know, you? I, I don't know if I can afford anything that wonderful. <laughs> well, the distinctive dummies invasion of the body snatchers figure Went for what? Uh, it was like a eighty-five Ori- bucks initially. originally. Originally, is about 80 or, 80 or ninety. Eighty-five right. or ninety dollars, right? So right, now you right. now if you go on eBay, it's like two hundred bucks at least. Yeah. At least two hundred bucks, and that's yeah. a great time. It's a great figure, and it'll make you so happy. But if you want something that maybe is a bit cheaper, that will also give you <laughs> the same type of joy, maybe even more. Then all you got to spend is $5 a month. What? $5? $5 a month. Holy shit, man. You, you can't get a Kathy Bates scented candle for that price. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you know what? I, I miss that scent. I really do. <laughs> So I guess I guess the invasion of the body snatchers figure comes with a little pod, and the Patreon comes from a podcast. Ah, oh, very good, James. Bada bing. Bada bing. This Happy is New the Year. Christmas you've been hoping for your entire <laughs> life. <laughs> and to join Patreon, all you got to do is go to patreon.com, go to Monster Party, click join, follow the instructions, and the sleigh ride begins. Well, it sounds wonderful. And hey, let's remind our listeners that we are on social media. Yes, we are on social media social too. Social media. Like the kids. Oh, like all the kids yes. these days. All those the teeny boppers out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook. We're on Facebook at Monster Party TV. YouTube. Free videos. Also Monster Party TV on YouTube. We're on Twitter. You know, we'll go there. We're on Twitter. <laughs> at, at Monster Party HQ on Twitter. And also Instagram, <laughs> which is also Monster Party HQ. And hey, wherever you're listening to us in the world, please Find a way to write us a review and share your thoughts. We will look for your review and we will read it on the air. And we'll read it to Santa. <laughs> on that note, I am Matt Weinhold. I'm Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. Keep America strong. And happy holidays to all our listeners. And buy a bunch of stuff. But if you want to get that distinctive dummies invasion of the body snatchers figure, get in line now. Don't worry, Matt. You're next. You're next. You're, You're next. next. You're <laughs> next. You're, You're next. next. I'm next. <laughs> I'm pretty. Ge- I'm pretty generic here. Okay, sweet. That's what I've been telling everyone. Keep it generic. <laughs> Larry's pretty generic. generic. <laughs> I'm regular <laughs> Joe. He's regular he's, Joe. Sorry. Right. I, 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 I. You know what? I want to redub you irregular Joe. <laughs>
<laughs> because if you are regular Joe, then there are no Joes. I don't. I don't even know. <laughs> but but if I'm irregular Joe, that means I'm going irregularly. It's like oh I got oh I'm like so irregular here. I gotta I got well, the restroom guys and and I don't like I don't know, know if like, I like that title. You you Matt. you, you <laughs> imprint whatever you want on the title, but. <laughs> Okay. I'd, ra- I'd rather be regular colon. Uh, I mean, regular oh, colon. fiber. <laughs> fiber. Oh, you have an irregular fiber colon. Joe? Okay. Oh, good old fiber high, Joe. High, high fiber Joe. <laughs> high fiber Joe. High, high fiber Joe. That's my uh, nickname online. Hey, hey <laughs> Joe, give, give us a high fiber. <laughs> <laughs> See. But but it's like if that means you do high fiber, that means oh he he must really have an issue. So it should just be regular fiber. Hey, well, I do not, a little fiber. We're like going everybody. down this road. What the hell are you talking issue? about? <laughs> How is your colon? Uh, I hope mine's good. Oh no! <laughs> as soon as I said, "How is your colon?" Larry froze for a moment. Dead silence. <laughs> <laughs> You know, my, right. my colon, you know, <laughs> hey, no, no, because everyone's asking and I'm sure everyone's, everyone's curious. Asking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, inquiring minds have, you You're know, right. have asked. The, fans, the fans have spoken. Go ahead. And just to let you know, I have been checked. Yes. And as of right now, I'm good. Good. I'm That's all good. good. good job. Now, good. Right. I'm, I'm due for another. Good checker. or great? I guess I'm, I'm. I'm I'm okay. I'm regular Joe. Everything looks good. <laughs> no, there's no polyps. There's no 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 polyps. Clean, clean as no a whistle. Like, there's no like little clean. demons living in there. Oh, I <laughs> wish. <laughs> no, no, anal, I don't anal, wish. Anal demons. Yeah. Yes, that's you know what. Anal uh, Manitou. When, when, yeah. when there are when these <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a Sean. movie right there. What is that? That's, 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 a, that's a porn anal a demons porn anal demons parody you know of, what? The, of the Manitou. When, those, when the gremlins that uh, torture Kim Darby and don't be right. afraid of the dark are done doing what they're doing, instead of running back to that little cave thing, now they just run right to Larry's colon because it's clean. <laughs> it's nice. You know, it's, a nice it's, it's just a nice place. The warmest place it's to nice hide is where to stay. So, you yeah. know, for a second, I thought you were meaning Darby O'Gill and the little people. That's what I thought at first you meant. No. You know, uh, I thought, uh, so, this is this is like a beautiful mind now. It's just there's so many tendrils <laughs> that this leads yeah. to. All right. All right. right. Okay. Okay. Now we we, we do have now our spinoff podcast. (laughs) Colon holiday gift guide. (laughs) (laughs) How many? How many? How many gift guides have we done? What is this? This this is like three or four. I think this is the fourth. I think. I think it's the fourth. Yeah. I think it's the fourth at least with Kevin. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And do you know what that means, Kevin? What does you that know, mean? It means that you get a gold we, star. We, we love having you for this episode. I mean, well, yes, yeah. you because you're a toy maker. It makes here, sense. You know, yeah. yeah. You, you make our colons feel young again. I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> We're all regular you're, you're, now. You make yeah. me feel like a colon on Christmas morning. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! And with friends like these, who needs enemas? Yeah. Oh, that's hey. right. Oh, there you go. Oh. God bless him all, everyone. <laughs> oh my show. god! Oh James! Leave it to James Gonis. Yes, he's our Christmas miracle. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Let's, all right. Do, it. let's, let's do, this. do this, fucker. Okay. All right. Give me a moment of silence, and I'll get right into it. Okay. So here we go, Kevin. You'll Kevin. You'll just don't don't speak. Yeah, I'll wait I, around till you. I, do yeah, that. he's only it, done give you an 108 of these episodes. Or these, yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> no, he hasn't done 108. He's done he's done a few, you know. But okay. I just like to remind him. Yeah, you know what, no, you know I'll, what I'm going to give you? That... I'm going to give you for Christmas a sense of exaggeration. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. All right. Did we all watch uh, Shin oh, Ultraman? Shin? Oh, Shin. Yeah. 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 So, so what's the? Uh, I, now, I, I liked I, it. I, I'll tell I you. I liked what, it. What, yeah. I didn't love it. Yeah. Okay. I, I liked. I, I thought it was still too much relying on CGI a little bit. Yes. I thought I, I wanted more physical, physical fighting. They did some. Yeah. But I wanted more. I wanted more physical yes. fighting, and and I thought that, and I kind of missed the um. I mean, I know it was their version of the Science Patrol, but I wanted it a little more. Me too. 
like I, I wanted a little bit more like the old show. And I, I understand they couldn't go completely like that, but yeah. it, it, it's good. It's, but it's not, it's like Shin Godzilla blew me away. It's perfect. Uh, yeah. Shin Ultraman. I enjoyed, but didn't blow me away. I agree. I enjoyed it. I think one of the problems that it had was it was trying to put too much into it. Yes. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It was almost like episodic. There was like this story, yeah. then this story, then this yeah. story. Too yeah. many so stories. Like a three, it felt like three episodes. Yeah. I mean, they should have done like as a limited season series. Into one movie. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. that's the thing because Ultraman, that's the thing maybe they should have thought about because Ultraman was a TV series originally. So they mm-hmm. should have made it like a limited six episode series, maybe. Well, I like the little Ultra Q nods at the beginning, too. Yeah. yeah there's there's cool. lots yeah. of little nods you that was know? cool. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I did, I did, I can't say that I didn't enjoy it. But yeah, yeah. it's just I, not I in this. The hell out of it. I, well, I, I I thought it was super fun. It was cool. Yeah, I just don't think it was in the same league as Shin Godzilla. Yeah, when they yeah. when he's fighting the terrestrial monsters, not the outer space stuff, but the the actual monsters on Earth. Mm-hmm. Those monsters, there's something. Shin Godzilla was the same style. Mm-hmm. There's something so kinetic about the way those monsters are yeah. portrayed. Well, and they shot. made them. They were actually kind of scary. Like they yeah. actually made yes. them yeah. threatening. They were genuinely threatening, which I liked. Yeah. And yeah. I like I said, I liked movie, a lot of it. I wish yeah, the whole movie yeah. had those monsters and it, yeah. it would have been amazing. And yeah. no, the, no Balton yeah. too. No, I was surprised. Yeah. The soundtrack yeah. was great though. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. The music was, I, I did was, like it. I did like it. I can't wait to see the Shin. Common Rider. Common Rider. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get goofy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 